Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is the Guilds of Ravnica set review for green. So we actually have a green shirt for today, which is nice. And uh, let's get into the uh, cards here for green for Guilds of Ravnica. Affectionate Indric, I guess that's how you want to say that, is a 6 mana 4-4 four, four uncommon beast. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creature you don't control. This is a quite good uncommon for you uh, in your draft and sealed pool. Probably not going to see any kind of standard or modern or commander play, but in draft and sealed, this is exactly what you want to be doing if you're behind. And if you're ahead, it's still a 6 mana 4-4, four, four, which is not terrible. Um, but it, you know, can definitely shoot down an opponent's creature on their side of the field as well. It might trade with stuff because it is fight because each deals damage equal to its power to the other. So it could be trading with something on your opponent's side of the field, but more often than not, it's probably just going to get rid of a two, two or a three, three on your opponent's side of the field. And that's exactly what you want to be doing with this card. So love it for that. I think it's a high draft and sealed pick for you at uncommon. Next up, we've got the Abortum Elemental, a eight mana, seven, five uncommon elemental with convoke and hexproof. This card might honestly see some uh, standard play just based on how this can be a 4 mana 7 5 with hexproof. I think that's amazing. Um, in Draft and Seal, this is a huge bomb. Your opponent can't remove it. They're going to have to, you know, block with multiple creatures because it has 5 toughness. I think having the uh, 9 mana cost on top of this is not, a mu it's not much at all because it's probably going to be, you know, uh, convoked down to probably five or four if you have a wide board state in Celesnia, or five or four if you just have a nice big board state in Golgari. This is a very powerful card for Draft and Seal. Probably will see some standard play as well. Super big bomb. Next up, we've got Beast Whisperer, a four mana rare two three elf druid. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Now this is a card that will like subtly win you the game in Drafted and Sealed. So very high draft pick for me if I'm in Celesnia or a just a heavy creature deck in Draft and Sealed. This is also a card that might see a ton of commander play as well, because drawing cards and casting creatures, that's what you want to be doing in commander if you're a green deck. Uh, and this card is perfect for that. As far as this seeing any kind of standard play, I'm kind of leery there. It's a little expensive for that format, uh, but I do think that since we do have a lot of lower to the ground strategies, like in Gruul, like red green, a lot of lower to the ground uh, creatures right now, Beast Whisper might be in a deck list that could do something. So we'll see what happens here for standard, but I do think for draft sealed and commander, this card is amazing. Moving up, we've got Bounty of Might, a six mana rare instant. It just says the same thing three times, which is interesting. Target creature gets plus three, plus three into end of turn, and it says it two more times. I don't know why it just said why it shouldn't just say up to three creatures get plus three, plus three into end of turn. That's that's interesting, um, but okay. <laughs> uh, wish it gave him trample or something like that. If you're paying six mana, this is uh, a card that you definitely want to have give trample to something. Um, not that great in standard or any other formats. Uh, probably fine for like commander, I guess, casually. Um, as far as it being a card for draft and seal, this is a card that might win you the game if your opponent can't block all the damage coming your way, coming their way, um, or if you have, or if you put this on top on top of uh, creatures that have uh, trample as well. So if your creature already has trample, then this is definitely a blowout card for sure. Moving up here, we have a. Uh, so Courteous Route, this is a four mana uncommon sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards, then put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. I really like this for draft and sealed as far as ramping. Um, this might see some play in standard as far as a ramp deck somewhere. The best thing about this card is that it grabs basic lands and or gates, which is like mana fixing really nicely in drafted and sealed. So if you get into this in your uh, Celesnia deck or into your Golgari deck in draft and sealed, this is definitely amazing for those particular uh, deck archetypes. Moving up, we've got Crushing Canopy, a good reprint here, a three mana instant. It's a common choose one, destroy target creature with flying or destroy target enchantment. Um, good sideboard hate in draft and sealed, probably a card we might see in sideboard in standard um, other than that we have some new art here which is nice and uh, yeah this is probably just gonna be a good sideboard uh, card to get into in draft and sealed if you're up against a big flyer deck uh, like an is it deck or um, just another flyer deck with white cards as well moving on we've got uh, the distant here a two mana two two common elf warrior you can pay five and give it plus two plus two until end of turn um, this is probably okay in draft and sealed a two mana two two bear is fine uh, But having the upside of giving it like mid to late game pump advantage making it a four four uh, Or if you have ten mana a six six, which you probably won't But have making this a four four is probably fine in draft and sealed um, I do like it for that if you have lots of mana to burn 
So good for that environment. Uh, but probably not going to see any kind of uh, standard play or anything like that. Moving on, we've got District Guide, a 3 mana 2 2 Uncommon Elf Scout. When it enters a battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card or a gate card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Again, this is a very powerful card for you uh, in draft and in sealed because it helps you get your gates. And gates, again, are two different colors of mana. Um, which is really nice. So this is great for Celestia, great for Golgari. Um, and in uh, standard, this might actually see some play as well because again, it's grabbing uh, a basic land, putting it into your hand, um, but it's also grabbing a gate as well. Again, those are multiple colors of mana. Um, could be quite powerful in uh, standard as well, but I think it's probably a little too overcosted uh, for that format rather. Uh, moving up here, we've got a Generous Stray, a 3 mana 1 2 cat common. Love the art on this one. Uh, when it enters a battlefield, draw a card. This is a fantastic card. Uh, 3 mana 1 2, uh, Wish It Had Flying or something like that, like the um, the Servo we had previously or the Thopter we had previously in Corset. Uh, but this is fine for green. Drawing cards in green is always powerful. Um, and being able to just be a 1 2 that can, you know, trade with a 2 1 is great as well. So. Quite good for that. Wish it was two mana instead of three, but you know, the drawing the card of that, that's why it's three mana. So it's okay. It's going to be like your 14th or 15th pick in draft and sealed. And of course, not going to see any kind of play anywhere else. Moving up, we've got Golgari Raiders, a four mana, zero, zero, uncommon elf warrior with haste and undergrowth. Uh, when it enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature card in your graveyard. So this is very good in the mid to late, late game. Uh, where this can turn into a 4-4 or 5-5 with haste for just four mana. So very, very good. The problem here is, of course, if you're trying to get this out in the mid game, it might just be a 3-3 with haste, which isn't terrible, but just isn't good enough. Um, I do think that in a Golgari deck, though, in Draft and Seal, this could be a huge bomb for you, depending on how many creatures you do have in the uh, the yard there. Just keep in mind that in Draft and Seal, you only have 40 cards in your deck, so pitching lots of things into the graveyard might not work out so well for you in Draft and Sealed, and I don't really see this card seeing much play outside of that. Moving up here, we've got Grappling Sundew, a 2-mana 0-4 uncommon plant with Defender and Reach. You can pay 5, and it gains Indestructible on Twin of Turn. I really like this in a Selesnya deck, especially if your opponent has a lot of flyers coming your way, because you can just pay five and make this an indestructible blocker forever. So very good for that, very powerful. It's also just a two mana zero four as well, so you don't really have to use the indestructible clause to make it useful either. So very good for draft and seal. Again, not gonna see any kind of play elsewhere. Next up for us, we have Hatchery Spider, a seven mana five seven rare spider with reach. Undergrowth, when you cast a spell, reveal the top X cards from your library, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. You may put a green Green permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest of the, on the bottom of your library in a random order. Um, so in draft and sealed, this is definitely a bomb because it's a seven mana five seven with reach. That's really good already. Um, the undergrowth trigger here is kind of secondary to that uh, for draft and sealed. Being able to look, you know, three cards deep and get a three converted mana, that's fine, I guess. Um, it's not amazing. It's kind of like Genesis Hydra, but like this is really like is making you have to have a lot of cards in your gar graveyard for this to work. Um, not so sure that the secondary undergrowth clause here is going to be that important, uh, but I do think a 5-7 with reach is fine in drafted and sealed. And again, probably not going to see any kind of play in standard, but might see some play in commander. Moving up, we've got Hitchclaw Recluse, a 3-mana 1-4 spider. Another spider here with reach. Um, this is fine. Very, very good. It's not, uh, you know, a giant spider, but it is a 3-mana 1-4, which is nice. I do think this will see lots of play in Draft and Sealed, uh, but no play elsewhere. Moving on, we've got Iron Shell Beetle, a 2-mana 1-1 one, one insect. When it is a battlefield, put a plus-one, plus-one counter on target creature. Um, a 2-mana 1-1 one, one is bad, um, but a 2-mana 1-1 one, one that puts a plus-one, plus-one counter on something on your side of the field is not bad. Um, so making your 2-2 two, two into a 3-3 three, three, or a 3-3 three, three into a 4-4 four, four is quite good. Um, so this could be, you know, the 14th or 15th slot for you in a Draft and Sealed deck. Um, but yeah, I don't think this is that powerful in uh, Standard uh, for sure, so might not see it there at all. Next up, we've got Crawl Foragers, a 5-mana 4-4 four, four Insect Scout with Undergrowth. Whenever it enters a battlefield, you gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. A 5-mana 4-4 four, four by itself is very, very good. And a 5-mana 4-4 four, four that perhaps can gain you 3, 4, maybe even 6 life uh, in the middle of a Draft and Sealed match is very good. And I do think this is a card you probably want to get into as a top end bomb, a top curve bomb for you in Draft and Sealed. But again, probably not going to see any kind of play outside of that. Undergrowth here just is really narrow and seems to be only for Draft and Sealed right now. Next up, we've got Crawl Harpooner, a 2-mana 3-2 uh, uncommon insect warrior with reach. That alone, fantastic, but it also has undergrowth. When you use the battlefield, choose up to one target creature with flying you don't control. Uh, the Harpooner gets plus X, plus zero onto end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Then you may have it fight the Harpooner, uh, or then you may have the Harpooner fight that creature. 
very good because basically it's a removal spell if you need it to be, uh, but it's a May ability. You may have it fight, so it could also just be a 3-2 with reach hitting the battlefield that doesn't use the undergrowth ability at all. So I really like this a lot. Um, I think it's very powerful. Um, the best part about this, though, is that it gives you the options of doing stuff. So in Draft and Steel, this is an all-star uncommon for you, um, but in standard, this probably won't see any kind of play whatsoever. However, I do think maybe in a Golgari list, this could be a sideboard card getting rid of those uh, pesky flyers like Aurelia in standard. Uh, moving up here, we have Might of the Masses, a one green mana uncommon instant. Target creature gets plus plus one until end of turn for each creature you control. In a Selesnya deck, this card might be a huge blowout win for you. Um, you know, anywhere else this card might not be that great as far as a Golgari list, but giving plus three plus three for just one white mana at instant speed, defensively or offensively, is very, very good. So a good pump spell for you in Draft and Sealed. Probably not going to see any kind of play outside of that, though. Next up, we have Nullhide Ferox, a four mana mythic 6-6 six, six beast with Hexproof. Uh, you can't cast non-creature spells and you can pay two. Nullhide Ferox loses all abilities until end of turn. At any player may activate this ability. And then if an ability or spell an opponent controls causes you to discard of this card, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. Ferox is a very good mythic for you, uh, very powerful uh, in draft sealed, and probably going to see a lot of standard play as well. So, uh, the only downside, of course, is you can't cast non creature spells, but of course, you can turn that off by just paying the two mana for it. Um, so, very powerful all around. A four mana six six hexproofer, like, you, you can't really beat that at all. Even if it doesn't have hexproof here, a four mana six six is just ridiculous in draft and sealed. Um, this is a huge bomb for you, and this is definitely a first pickable card for Draft and Sealed. And again, gonna see standard play, absolutely. Very good card here. Next up, we've got Pax Favor, a three minute un uh, common instant with Convoke. Target creature gets plus three, plus three into end of turn. So this is almost, almost Giant Griff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, giving something uh, plus three plus three into end of turn at instant speed is quite good uh, and being able to pay just one mana for this or no mana for this is also quite good too. Um, so very good there. Um, I do like it as far as a pump spell for draft and in sealed. Very good card, especially offensively and defensively. I can always talk about that, but if it's instant speed, you can use it as, as a block defense spell. So very good for that. Um, and just think it's a very good card overall for draft and in sealed. Not going to see any kind of standard play whatsoever, though. Moving on, we got Pause for Reflection, a three mana common instant with Convoke. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So eh, a fog in uh, draft and sealed is okay. Not amazing. Probably something you don't want to get into. Uh, but this fog actually makes Bant Nexus of Fate a thing again in standard because we were just we were losing a fog uh, from rotation. Getting this into our uh, standard format may, means we have another fog, so that deck will be alive again. Um, so kind of sad about that, uh, but I do think this card is perfect for that deck list. So definitely going to see standard play. Probably won't see any kind of uh, draft and steel play unless you just really want a prevent combat damage. Um, for one turn on your opponent's side of the field. Moving on, we've got Pelt Collector, a one green mana rare, one one elf warrior. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a plus one plus one counter on Pelt Collector. As long as Pelt Collector has three or more plus one plus one counters on it, it has trample. So I think having a creature that has plus one plus one counters on it that grows really quickly is amazing. Um, and of course, giving it trample as it gets larger is also very, very good. So a turn one, one, one turning into a turn, you know, five or six, five, five or four four is really really powerful um and i do think the pill collector is gonna be a first pickable card definitely in draft and sealed and might see a lot of standard play as well just a card that like grows kind of showing uh, the evolve mechanic uh from previous ravnica sets so moving up here we've got uh, the vine here is that i think it's Portcullis Vine, I think that's how you pronounce that. A one mana, zero three defender. You can pay to sacrifice a creature with defender and draw a card. So basically sacrifice itself. Um, a one mana, oh three is fine in drafted and sealed, uh, but not gonna really gonna see plenty play outside of that. Uh, but being able to draw a card with it in the mid to late game when it's just kind of, it doesn't matter anymore um, is quite good. Being able to replace itself is quite good. Moving up, we've got Prey Upon. This is a great removal spell. A one green mana common sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. And that's perfectly fine. So if you're a green deck and you have this in your deck, it's probably gonna be a good removal spell against anything your opponent has on their side of the field. So very good for draft and sealed and uh, might see some cyber play in standard as well. Next up, we have Siege Worm. Uh, this is a seven mana five five with Convoke and Trample. All of this is good for you. Um, definitely a high pick bomb for you in drafted and sealed. Uh, being able to pay the Convoke cost here means it might just be a four mana five five with Trample. That's ridiculous. Um, if you just have three creatures to tap down for it. Um, I think it's very, very good. Even paying the seven mana as a five, five trampler is also pretty good as well. So very good card for you in draft and seal. Not gonna see any kind of play outside of that though. Next up, we have Sprouting Renewal, a three mana sorcery uncommon with Convoke. Choose one, create a two, two green and white elf knight creature token with vigilance. 
pretty good, or destroy target artifact or enchantment. Now, this is a very good card for you in Draft and Sealed because it gives you options uh, as you're kind of playing throughout the match. So you either have removal for an artifact or enchantment, or you just have a 2-2 with Vigilance. And I think both of those for three mana is quite good. Uh, obviously, you can't choose both of them. I'm saying like those options for three mana is not bad. Um, the only issue here for me is that it's at sorcery speed, so you can't really in, like instance a two mana 2-2 uh, two -two, or a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance. There we go. <laughs> Onto the battlefield, uh, which is a little annoying. Um, but besides that, I do think it's a very good card, especially if it's just one mana for you uh, if you're doing some Convoke costing there. So very good all-around card here. Next up, we have Urban Utopia, a two-mana uh, common aura. Enchant land. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and Enchant land has tap this, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So keep saying mana pool, but there's no, it's, it's not on there. <laughs> uh, very good card here for Draft and Seal. Draws you a card, helps you with mana fixing. This is exactly what you want to be doing. I'm not going to see any kind of play in standard, I don't think. I uh, wish you did additional mana, that would be great. Turning your one mana into two mana of any color, that'd be awesome. Uh, but just turning your one mana into another mana is basically just mana fixing uh, for draft and sealed. And uh, getting the extra card draw is just gravy for two mana. Next up for us, we have uh, this uh, Vigor Spore Worm, a six mana six four worm with undergrowth. When there's a battlefield, target creature gains vigilance and gets plus X plus X onto end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. And the worm can be blocked by more than one creature. This is a huge bomb for you in draft and in sealed. Uh, it's also a great pump spell for your board state as well. So in Golgari, this is a great card for you to get into draft and sealed. Um, probably not going to see any kind of standard play, but it has enough stuff on top of it that there might be some brew around play, like in the fringes somewhere of kitchen table magic. Um, but I do think for draft and sealed, this is a huge bomb. You know, blocking one to one with four toughness is pretty hard against any other opponent unless they have like a four four or five five like in Golgari, or is it maybe? Besides that, though, very powerful card, and I think it's going to be a huge bomb for you in your deck. Next up, we have Vivid Renewal, or Revival, not Renewal, <laughs> Vivid Revival, sorry. A five mana uh, rare sorcery. Return up to three target multicolored cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Vivid Revival. Um, This is kind of bad in Draft and Sealed. It, uh, returning cards like this is never really good. This is more of a commander card only. Uh, where you only have one use cards basically in your deck list. So this is great for that. Uh, but for command, uh, for uh, standard, for draft and seal, this card's kind of bad. And I would feel really bad for you if this was your pack one rare. Um, just, you know, don't use it. <laughs> it's kind of a wasted turn. Obviously, it's getting stuff back from your graveyard. But when you're in draft and seal, you're probably only going to have like a handful of multicolored cards. And having them all be in the graveyard for this to grab up to three uh, is a little um, narrow and uh, not that great, especially if you're behind in a match and drafted and sealed. So this is great for Commander, but no, nowhere else really. Wary Akepi is a three mana three two with Vigilance Antelope. It's a common. This is great. It's a great common for you. It's a great attacker for you. Um, a three two is going to trade with the most stuff and having Vigilance means it's going to be able to attack and block, which is great for Draft and Sealed. This is basically just a bread and butter card for you uh, for Draft and Sealed. Not going to see any kind of play outside of Draft and Sealed, uh, but fantastic there uh, as a great attacker for you on turn three or turn four uh, rather. Uh, next up, we have a uh, Wild Ceratok. This is a four mana four three vanilla creature. This is fine. <laughs> Um, just going to see play in draft and in sealed. Um, doesn't really do anything. It's going to trade with stuff, which is fine. A four mana four three is okay. Never really a bad card to pick into. Uh, if you don't have a, a 14th or 15th creature, though, Wild Ceratoc could be a card to bring in uh, for that. But besides that, not going to see play anywhere else. And that is going to do it for the green for the Guilds of Ravnica set review. The next uh, we're getting into will be the gold cards. And then, of course, the uh, artifacts and the lands. That'll be the last set review video. <laughs> so that's awesome for us. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Like if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next set review where we go over the, uh, the gold cards. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.